good morning again. We got a nice sunrise this morning. It just happened a few minutes ago. Uh, maybe I'll show you a little bit of a time lapse. I think yesterday's time lapse it was just a little bit too uh, too long, <laughs> too big. <laughs> okay, I'm noticing I'm getting a, quite a mess going on here. And I did come back to the model table yesterday. Did quite a bit here. We are. I'm 99% sure we are going to be finished this module in today's episode. And uh, yeah, we we did. Uh, what now? What's this thing here? Well, you have to watch the rollback. It will be explained. <laughs> okay. Enough nervous laughter. Uh, let's uh, continue on uh, and have our have our rollback and. Uh, and see how it is we got to this place. Okay, I've come back to the model table on this, you might say, beautiful late July afternoon. And I did finish up these three railings. I guess you'd say four railings. The one that you saw at the end of the last episode. <laughs> I was a little bit careless when I removed the holder downer and I broke it off so I kinda got exasperated you might say and I just glued it on off camera and I thought you know I may as well go ahead and do the rest off camera we can always move ahead and turn the page afterwards and there will be lots to video but I've probably been working at this for about an hour I guess altogether and I've got to the place where we are right now and I'm I'm pretty sure that the CA that I've put beaded all the way around the inside of this top railing has cured now. I, I did use the Instaset um, so I, I know it, it looks wet but I don't think it is. I think it's actually dry. Um, so I'm going to try and carefully get my my needle out of there because the the fork is sort of around a post and over a rail and it's uh, if I if I don't draw it straight back this way and accidentally lift up a little bit um, I'm going to pull it off so here we go all right um, And there are very few places now I can grab hold of this thing. I, I have to be very conscious when I pick it up that I don't accidentally squeeze in the wrong place or I'm going to be putting something back on again. So I, I, th I think it came out okay. Um, I'm noticing that this, this back rail right here, I had to sort of, you'll notice it's sort of curved, curved in a bit. Well, I was having trouble getting this railing to sit on this platform. It would either want to fall off one way or fall off the other way or slip off the back or and getting this radius just right it that was a took a bit of doing first I it was too wide and then I got it too narrow and but I, I basically got it now I was thinking I could probably grab hold of this and squeeze it with with the photo X plier but I'm afraid I could put stress uh, you know in the wrong direction so uh, I might just wait a little while and see if, if this can't maybe just be, be pushed back very gently. Now the the support for the for the uh, tower or not the tower but the uh, the mast or whatever it is goes right here. So this this is going to sort of be hidden in behind anyway, and I don't think anybody will notice that that this railing is sort of curved in like this. Um, Maybe you're too far back to see what I was talking about. Okay, I took a look at my monitor after I shot that scene and I realized that there was probably a lot of very frustrated viewers unable to see what I was talking about. So, this this is what I was talking about. This railing is sort of bent in and, and I'd like to just sort of somehow pull it back out. But I'm afraid if I, if I try to squeeze on it, so why am I doing it then? Just try and try and bend it back, and the uh, pedestal for the 
antenna is going to be right there so this will all be hidden anyway that's what I was trying to talk about now according to the manual there's an F1 is supposed to go right there and I thought I'd made up all of those but apparently I didn't so I hope to goodness there's another one of these things on the F sprue because I can't find one that's already made up okay I remember getting these off the other F sprue there are two F sprues and um, the reason I remember it is because I remember saying I, I want to try and cut the the ends of these nice and flush and not sand them because I might accidentally break this off when I'm trying to sand it so I'm just I'm, even though I only need one right now I'm going to do the two of them and uh, uh, for, for instance this this one here was not a 42 the 42 was fastened on right here these were both number ones so I'm just going to go ahead and quickly do it and paint them to 56 and and then get it over with here. If I'm not careful I'm going to have these things broken yet. Okay so I've got uh, the two of them trimmed and a lot of the flashing scraped off the top there and uh, it didn't break anything. Got them painted with the 56 and I was going to take one of these and I was going to stick it down there and and then I suddenly realized, well, no, we're going to have to paint everything here. Um, now, I've got an idea for, for painting this. At first I thought what I'd do is I'd just stick it down on the rotator and just rotate it as I needed it. But it would be a lot easier if I could twist it this way and that way and so on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go down to my workshop and find a piece of you know, like one inch dowel or something and just fasten it up in the, in the top here with, with blue tack. And I'll have sort of a handle that I can hold on to. Uh, at least that's the plan. Okay, this is what I found. It wasn't, wasn't what I was thinking of, but when I saw it, I realized that this end is just about the right diameter. And it's, it's even painted or something on the end. I, I would like to be able to remember what it is I made this for. I, I obviously turned it, after I turned it to the shape it is, I cut it this way and then I cut it this way um, yeah that's uh, <laughs> does anybody remember in my many many workshop videos what I made this thing for anyway I'll put blue tack on there and uh, I should be able to mount it yeah, this is, this is going to mount really well on there. It won't it won't break off, and and then I'll I'll be able to hang on to it. Now I'm going to want to have something that I can. Obviously, I can't lay it down when I'm when I'm finished. So I'm going to have to stand it in something or on on something. Maybe I'll put my my vise on the on the table here, and then I can just sort of quickly clamp it when I'm through. Now I'm I'm going to be doing most of this uh, painting uh, off camera. In fact, probably all of it. That way I can quickly get it done. I'm likely going to have to do two coats in places. And I want to be careful that I don't get it on the windows. Um, so I can do a much more careful job, you might say, if I'm not, uh, if I'm not uh, videoing at the same time. Believe it or not. <laughs> Even though I really enjoy the videoing. Okay, let's, let's just get at it here and... Uh, Probably the next time you see this thing, it's going to be sitting on the rotator and we'll be seeing what kind of a poor job I did of painting. <laughs> well, I've accidentally touched one window. Most of it just has one coat, especially the side markers. I'm going to have to go over them with red and green anyway. But I'm not seeing any uh, photo etch, photo etch uh, glinting uh, on the railings. So I'm not going to do them a second coat. Uh, yeah. Okay, clean my brush and 
let it dry and we'll have a good look. Okay, I'm guessing a couple of hours has passed here. And uh, yeah, it's too bad about that one window. I I know you, you can't see it from way back where you are, but it's it's this one right here. And the only reason I know is because I know where to look. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna break it out and try and redo it or anything. I'm just gonna Okay. <clears throat> I I think that the uh, paint is probably shrunk wrapped around the railings and stuff like that about as much as it's going to. And uh when I put the blue blob of blue tack on the end of the stick here and then shoved it into the bottom of the of the part, I warmed it up with the heat gun just a little to make it a little bit more malleable. And I'm hoping now that that has not... <clears throat> Hi Phil, can I put you on pause for a minute? Where were we? Uh, oh yeah. Now, I was wondering, is this going to come off easily or not? And I, I just want to make sure that I grab it in a, in a good spot here because I'm probably going to have to put a little bit of force on it. Maybe if I put my thumb underneath here, I can just sort of pry very slowly. Oh, it's coming. That's good. I think this blue tack idea on the end of a stick was was a good idea. Okay, there's the blue tack. And I think I can hold it right here. Yeah, just a little bit of residue in there. Now, somebody was commenting about the fact that I'm spinning my rotator a lot. No, I'm not offended, uh, but I just wanted to explain why why I do that. Because first of all, it it always keeps the part at the same distance from the lens, so I know that it's always in focus. Second of all, when something is moving, even though it is a two-dimensional picture, because it is moving, it gives the illusion of three dimension. Now maybe I maybe I spin it too much. Maybe I spin it too fast. Anyway, that's why I use the rotator a lot. So let's let's just uh, reposition here and uh, have a look at our, our railings, which are basically around the back here. And I will rotate it so that you can see it. Okay, maybe what I'll do is I will compromise and I will try to learn to rotate a little bit more slowly. I don't need to spin it like the helicopter taking off or something. Um, okay, I'm quite happy with with the way these railings came out. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know if I'm seeing any photo etch glinting on the top of, where is this something I can poke with here? Right here on the top of this post, I'm seeing something that looks like it might be brass, but it's hard to tell. Um, I think we got them pretty good. Uh, the the decks now these decks i would have liked to have had them a little darker um and uh but i guess it's it's kind of too late now i'm afraid i'm going to make a mess of the railing if i if i try um i think everything that has to be painted now now the the side markers i'm going to be doing them uh red and green and uh Okay, let's get around here. Our uh, our vents that are upside down. Uh, okay. Um, the, these things came out fairly good. Uh, I would say basically there's just one coat on them, and you can you can sort of tell. But but they look they look pretty good to me. Um, yeah, I'm 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 quite happy with the way this this came out. I I think that we can. Uh, go ahead now and uh, mount one of these in, in this hole right here. 
Um, yeah, let, let's do that. Let's let, we we got a little bit of time here this this evening. It's only seven thirty-five. Um, yeah, we got a little bit of time. Yeah, that's going to fit. I need three hands here. I know somebody's thinking, for once he doesn't bathe it in glue. That may not be enough. That uh, you know what the the peg is just a little bit. Where's my nippers here? The peg is just a little bit too long. It wouldn't go all the way down in the hole. At least I, I'm, I'm assuming that's what was, was happening there. Yeah, that, that seems a lot better. Yeah, that's a lot better. Okay. Now this piece has to drop down right on here. But before we do that, I think it might be a good idea to paint our markers red and green, uh, <clears throat> preferably on the proper sides. Okay, so... Uh, the left side is the red side, and the right side is the starboard side, which is the green side. Okay, so this that would be this side here is going to be green, and I, I did paint the top gray and the bottom gray and, and the back of it gray. But all of the cylindrical part and all of this part here, I'm going to paint the green. And then it'll be red on the other side, of course. Um, I don't think that the entire bracket is supposed to be green. I think just, just the... This is supposed to represent a, a light, I believe. And uh, like like a, a globe, a glass, a glass globe. And then this would probably be some sort of a, either a reflector or maybe something that could be seen in the, in the daytime if you were close enough. But you know, if you, I, I don't see why you would need something like that. <clears throat> it should be obvious which way the ship is going. I mean, <laughs> the, the Rodney and the Nelson were so distinctive. I mean, you could spot them 50 miles away and know which way they were going. Uh, well, maybe not 50 miles, but uh, you know what I mean. This is kind of runny. I must have must have really thinned it out. Now I don't need very much here, but I I don't want it that dark. Now when I'm dealing with a very small amount of paint like this, it will it will dry out quickly on me. That, that's more full. Okay, let's just add a little bit of white to it here and lighten it up. Now, 
I think that'll probably be enough. I'm gonna I'm gonna mix first before I get green on the stick. Yeah, I think I think that'll I think that'll show up a little better as green. It's not such a deep forest colored green. Okay, now it's not going to take very much here. I know I, I should really have the macro lens on, right? Maybe I'll put the macro lens on when I do the red. Where's my other eyes? I don't want to be getting the I don't want to be getting the green on the back of this light. You know, I wonder if this is sort of an afterthought here. What if a person was to do the uh, micro crystal clear on top of this? Okay, I think I pretty much got it there. Okay, when we do the red, I'll, I'll uh, recompose. It's not really right at the top of this. So I don't want to get it on the bulkhead either. Okay, I think that's about as high as I dare. You know what, I think I did get a little bit of green on this one little corner there. Now this is our, our port side. This is the side that's going to be against the back of the case. Now, one one of the viewers reminded me that those uh, vents, I can see them but you can't, are, uh, are on this side of the superstructure, which is going to be at the back of the case. And uh, so they're upside down, but no one's going to see it. kind of pooling it on, but I wanted to sort of, I don't want it to overflow. Now we were, we are almost working on the microscopic here. Trying not to go over that edge, but up to it. Um, it's a little spot right there I missed. Yeah, I got it now, or is that a bubble? Okay, I think I think when that dries, it's going to dry nicely. Oh, I just looked in the monitor. I'm sorry to get in your light here. sort of filled it up. Maybe if I come up from the bottom like this. Yeah, that's better. Too bad that the green didn't show up like that. Now, I think it was UK Jason was saying that this thing on the front is supposed to be red. You know what? I this is a bad angle for me. I'm gonna have to do this off of, off camera. 
In other words, I'm probably going to make a mess of it here. So why am I still trying that? Maybe if I scrunch myself right down here. I don't know if I did a good job or not. Okay, I've very carefully laid this over on its back here. And I've redone this uh, emblem. It's sort of pooled on there. So I'm hoping that when it dries, it's not going to dry all wrinkly. I guess we'll find out in the morning. So... We'll see you in the morning. Okay, it is morning. And our little emblem or crest or whatever it is, it, uh, it, it should be dry now. I, I don't want to touch it because the paint was, it was actually quite thick last night. Now, you notice we've got a little bubble going on here, but at... You know, when you look at this at, at arm's length, it almost looks like it's supposed to be there because it, it, it's right in the, pretty much in the dead center of the crest. Um, if I had noticed it last night, you know, I would have popped it. Um, but we'll, we'll just leave it. We're not going to try and fix that. What I am going to try to do, though, is I wish that the green that I put on was, was, had been a gloss green. Because this, this shows up really, really nice. And uh, so what I'm going to try to do with the green is put a little bit of the crystal clear on it. And hopefully it's going to uh, sort of act as a, uh, make it translucent sort of, and uh, or, or transparent, and it'll be glossy. Um, and then we're pretty much ready to, to put the mast on. Um, yeah, we're I think we're, basically done with this module. Now I was getting all ready to apply the micro crystal clear here and uh, I keep bumping this thing. I'm noticing that I've got uh, photo etch glinting through here so I gotta try and see if I can cover this up somehow. Second coat shouldn't hurt. Okay, we'll let that we'll let that dry and sort of shrink. Now I had thought that that where that pin was supposed to go down through the hole I had thought that that would have plugged up with paint but it didn't now it's a good thing that we are not going to be looking at this with the macro lens okay here's the latest now on the green and I have decided not to try and uh, enhance this with the uh, micro crystal clear. I'm just going to leave it flat. Uh, my thinking is that, um, I don't know, it, it just might not look natural. No, I, I realize there's a lot of stuff on this that just doesn't quite look natural, but I, I think it look it's going to look better like this. At least that that's my thinking right now. Okay. Uh, 
I want to be careful how I grab this thing that I don't break off a ladder. And there are just so very few places that I can hold on to it here. <laughs> Um, very, very gently like this. I think if I grab a hold of this, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to end up having an accident here. Maybe I should be using the, uh, my, my rubber tip tweezers here. Find a good spot where there's where I can squeeze on it and not need to worry about breaking anything. Like right there. Now is this gonna wanna stay there or is it gonna wanna fall off? This is rather, uh, rather precarious, isn't it? I can, I can feel it better what it's doing if I'm actually holding it with my fingers. I lose too much, uh, feeling th through the tweezer. No, why is this not fitting on there? I know it, it used to fit on there. I want to feel it sort of lock into place. Maybe I'm just going to have to reposition here. Yeah, we're going to have to put, I'm going to have to reposition. Okay, I eventually got it glued on. Um, I don't know why I was having so much trouble getting it to fit before because it, it did sort of fall into place. And I've used the uh, Revell to glue it down. It's still, uh, it's still wet. But it is sort of balanced there. It does want to sort of stay there all by itself. Um, we'll, we'll take a better look at it maybe. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to have to paint over the Revell, get rid of that glint. And uh, I'm going to call today's episode quits here. It's uh, pretty lengthy already. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching everybody. And all being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow.